Hello everybody, it's a bit of a different video today. I'm going to be doing a tier list of the Canadian provinces. Uh, I'm only doing the provinces, not the territories. The territories are on here, but I'm just going to ignore them because the data that I'm using isn't uh, present for some of those territories. It's easier to find data on the provinces. And I'm going to be trying to do this with a relatively objective set of data. Uh, I don't want to have it based on my personal opinion. Maybe in the future, depending on the response to this video, I might do one where I I rate provinces on purely subjective things like the best scenery and stuff like that, the best food maybe if there's enough uh, data to go by there. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be switching in my um, spreadsheet here and I'll show you the data set that I'm using. Okay, so let's look at the spreadsheet. This is the spreadsheet that I'm going to be using to rank all these provinces and it's also going to be where the data is present if you're curious. So each province will get a score based on their ranking in each of these categories. For the most part, the best score will get a 10, the worst score will get a 1, however, there's some categories that are weighted heavier, so the best score will get a 20 or a 30. Okay, so the first category is unemployment. This is the unemployment rate in July 2021. Of course, it's during the pandemic, so I've also put in a COVID death rate per 100,000 category just to balance that out. Uh, after that is GDP per capita. This is one where obviously the highest score wins, unlike the first two where the lowest score wins. Population growth is next, that's from 2011 to 2016. There's no data from the 2021 census yet, it just hasn't been released. They've done the census, but the data is still not public yet. Uh, they're probably still compiling it, I would assume. Next is violent crime rate per 100,000. This is from 2020. This is a category, again, where the lowest score will win. The next category is crop production. This is in millions of dollars, so it's like a GDP, but it's only counting crop production. This is 2020 data, and of course this is going to put the larger provinces at a big advantage, so I've also put a land area category. So the crop production category, of course, is going to favor the largest amount of crops produced, so highest score wins, but land area is going to be the opposite, so lowest score is going to win, like violent crime rate, so PEI is going to get the highest score in land area, just to balance out some of these other categories that favor big provinces. So the next category is the electricity generation in gigawatt hours in the month of May 2021. This is the most recent month available with uh, data from Stats Canada. Again, this is going to be a category that puts the larger and more populated provinces at an advantage. So I put in a population category as well. Electricity generation, like crop production, highest score wins. But with population, it's like land area where the lower populated provinces are going to get a higher score in this round just to balance out some of the other rounds. So the next category is total road network in thousands of kilometers. This is the total distance of all public roads in the province, whether they're just city streets, provincial highways, or Trans-Canada highways, all of them count, and it also includes both paved and unpaved roads. HDI is the next category. HDI data is from 2019. This is Human Development Index, so it's a very important category covering a lot of different important factors such as life expectancy, standard of living, and education. And then finally, federal revenue to expenditure ratio. Uh, this is basically a give to take ratio. So it's how much that province pays into the federal government through income taxes, sales taxes, corporate taxes, and other taxes uh, versus how much money that province receives from the federal government through uh, program funding and transfer payments and such. So those are all the categories. And then the total score will be uh, a summary or a sum of the score from each of these categories. So some of these categories have a different weight to them. Most of them are just weighted as one, so the best score will get a 10 and the lowest score will get a one. But some of them I felt were either more important or the in the case of land area and population, they're meant to balance out more than one category. So land area and population have a weight of two, so the smaller provinces will get a 20 and the largest province will get a two. Uh, HDI, since it's a very important category and it covers a lot of different factors, I gave it a weight of 3, so the best scoring province will get a 30. Um, and then the give to take ratio, I gave a weight of 2 just because I think it's pretty important which provinces are kind of pulling their weight in Canada and which provinces are a net benefit in terms of uh, federal revenue and expenses. If you have any feedback on this category system or the scoring system, leave them in the comments. If there's any categories you think I should have added or ones that you think I should have weighted more or weighted less, 
leave them in the comments. I might make a second attempt at this in the future with slightly different scoring systems or slightly different categories or more categories, but hope you enjoy this. Let's start with Alberta. So first province is Alberta. Their unemployment rate is fourth in the country, fourth highest. COVID death rate is also fourth highest, but their GDP per capita and population growth rate are both first and they lead both of these categories by quite a large margin, especially population growth. Violent crime rate is fourth in the country, crop production is third, land area is also fourth, electricity generation is third, population is fourth, and their road network is second. Uh, the road network is actually very close to being first and this data was the most recent I could find and it's from 2009 so I'm sure Alberta's road network has increased a lot since then, mainly due to suburban growth of Calgary and Edmonton. HDI is first so Alberta is the best province for HDI and also for uh, revenue to expenditure ratio. That puts Alberta at a total score of 119 which definitely puts them in the S tier. So next province is BC. Just for the sake of transparency, I should say that this is my home province and I've lived here my whole life, but I don't think I really put BC at a special advantage with any of these categories. So unemployment rate, BC ranks 8th, so 3rd lowest. COVID death rates around the middle at 6th. Um, GDP per capita around the middle again at 4th. Population growth, 4th. Violent crime rate, BC is actually pretty good at 7th, which is surprising to me. Crop production, BC is at 6th. Obviously, a lot of the land in BC is way too mountainous for farming, but the land that we do have, especially in the lower mainland, is pretty productive. Land area, BC is the third largest province. Electricity generation, BC is the fourth, uh, fourth best province, just behind Alberta. And population, BC is third, still quite a bit ahead of Alberta by over 500,000 people. BC's road network is also 6th, so not very good, again, because of the mountains, uh, for the size at least, not very good. And HDI BC is 2nd, uh, about 10 point, or point zero ten behind Alberta. And federal revenue to expenditure ratio BC is 2nd, so BC is one of only 3 provinces that actually pays more into the federal government than we receive. Again, this data is from 2018, though, so things may have changed a little bit. Especially for Alberta, I assume this number is a bit lower now. So that puts BC at a score of 105, which definitely puts BC in the A tier. So next is Manitoba. They have the lowest unemployment rate actually, or they're tied for the lowest, I should say, at 6.10%. Their COVID death rate though is the second highest in the country. GDP per capita is actually the lowest in the western provinces at 7th in the country. Population growth is pretty good at 3, or rank 3 out of 10. Uh, violent crime rate though, Manitoba is the second worst and they're actually quite a ways worse than the third uh, the third province. Crop production, Manitoba is fifth. I actually thought they'd be a lot higher, but I guess a lot of their land is not suitable for farming um, like with a long season, a long growing season, and perhaps the crops that they grow are not that valuable, but they do have quite a large farming area, so again, this is surprising. Land area was sixth. Electricity generation, right in the middle at fifth. Population, right in the middle at fifth. Uh, road network again in the middle at fifth. HDI is pretty low, again the lowest in the west at uh, seventh. And federal revenue to expenditure ratio, they're also at seventh, again the worst in the western provinces. So that puts Manitoba at a total score of 80, which puts them in the C tier. So Manitoba's flag is the one with the buffalo on it, or the bison, very similar to the Ontario flag. Okay, so New Brunswick is next. I don't think a lot of these categories are going to go very well for New Brunswick. So unemployment rate, they're the third highest. But COVID death rate, they're the third lowest. GDP per capita, they're also the third lowest. Uh, population growth, they're the worst. They're the only province between 2011 and 2016 that lost people. Violent crime rate right in the middle at fifth. Crop production at seventh, which is not too bad considering their land areas eighth. So if you're wondering why I put both these categories in when they might just cancel each other out. It's meant to benefit the provinces that produce a lot of crops uh, in quite a small land area. So New Brunswick has a bit of a benefit in this case. Electricity generation, they're seventh and population, they're eighth. Again, here they have a bit of a benefit because they produce a bit more electricity and crops uh, than their land area or population suggests that they should. And the road network is also seventh. So again, they kind of benefit from this balancing act that I have here going on. And their HDI though is pretty bad, it's second worst, and they're one of two provinces that's under 
for HDI, and they're also one of the worst for a federal revenue to expenditure ratio at eighth. So this puts New Brunswick at a score of 67, which unfortunately is below 70, so that puts uh, them in the D tier. I like their flag though, if it was more subjective in terms of stuff like flags, they may be a bit higher. Okay, next is Newfoundland and Labrador. Their unemployment rate is not really surprising. They have the highest unemployment rate they have for some time now, even before COVID. So they're first in that, but they're second lowest in COVID deaths per 100,000. Just obviously an island that requires a ferry to get to, it's easier to control travel. Um, GDP per capita, they're third, which is kind of surprising, but they do have a big oil industry. I think it's mainly offshore drilling in the Atlantic. Uh, population growth rate is eighth in the country at 1%. That's not very high considering it's over five years. Violent crime rate is actually pretty surprising too. It's third highest in the country, which I thought they'd be one of the lowest, but, um, but there is quite a big drop off between Manitoba at second and Newfoundland at third in terms of the actual crime rate itself. Crop production, Newfoundland is not, not known for crops at all. A lot of the land is too rocky to grow crops. So they're in 10th place at only 18 million. Land area, they're seventh. Electricity generation, they're sixth. Population, they're second lowest. By the way, land area, they're the largest of the Atlantic provinces. Uh, and road network, they're second lowest as well. HDI, which is kind of surprising. They're actually the lowest HDI when their GDP per capita is pretty good. And for federal revenue to expenditure ratio, they're right in the middle at fifth. I assume that if it wasn't for that oil industry, that would be a lot lower and perhaps they might even be the worst in that category. But this puts them at a score of 71, which puts them in the C category. Again, I really like their flag though. That might, might boost them up if this was more subjective. The next province is Nova Scotia. Unemployment rate, they're right in the middle at fifth. COVID deaths, they're seventh, which is pretty good, but they're also the highest in Atlantic Canada for COVID deaths per 100,000. GDP per capita, they're actually the worst in the country. Population growth, they're the second worst. They're barely growing. Violent crime rate, they're right in the middle at sixth. Crop production, they're second worst at ninth. Uh, land area, they're second lowest at ninth again. Electricity generation, they're actually eighth. And population, they're seventh. Road network, they're eighth. HDI, they're one of the lowest at eighth and federal revenue to expenditure ratio they're the second lowest at ninth they actually uh, receive twice as much money as they pay into the federal government that puts nova scotia at a score of 66 that's actually even below new brunswick so they're the lowest so far so next is ontario the most populated province and probably the most famous province and most important province in canada unemployment rate they rank sixth covid deaths third gdp per capita fourth Population growth, they're right in the middle at fifth. However, it's worth noting that in terms of total number, they have the most growth. Uh, violent crime rate, they're second lowest, which is kind of surprising. Um, recently, I believe Toronto has been ranked the second safest city in the world. Uh, whether or not you agree with that, Ontario is the second safest province in Canada. Crop production, Ontario is first. Land area, they're second over a million square kilometers. Uh, electricity generation, they're second. I thought they'd be highest, but Quebec apparently produces a ton of electricity. Um, population, of course, Ontario is first. Road network, they're third, which is surprising. But when you look at the when you look at a map of Canada, it's not that surprising actually, because a lot of northern Ontario is pretty rural and sparsely populated, and there's not many roads up there. And HDI Ontario is third, and federal revenue to expenditure ratio, they're also third. And they're the last of the three provinces that actually pay more into the federal government than they receive. This puts Ontario at a score of 103, which puts it just behind BC in the A tier. So the next province is PEI. Unemployment rate is the second highest in Canada. They were also pretty high before the pandemic. But COVID deaths, they're actually the lowest. They're actually the only province with no COVID deaths at all, which is pretty impressive, even though their population is relatively small, but it's still over 100,000. So that's very impressive. Good job to PEI on that one. Uh, GDP per capita, though, they're the second lowest, uh, just a little bit better than Nova Scotia. They're almost the worst, though. Um, population growth, they're seventh. They're actually the highest population growth province in the Atlantic provinces. Violent crime rate, they're the safest province in Canada. Crop production, they're eighth, which is pretty good for how small they are. Land area, they're the smallest, of course. Electricity generation, they're the lowest. Population, they're the smallest by quite a large margin. Newfoundland is the next smallest, of course. 
Uh, total road network, they're also the lowest. There's a, actually only 6,000 kilometers of roads in the province, which I thought it would be a lot higher than that. Um, and then HDI, they're fourth. This is a really surprising one to me. Um, so basically that's Alberta, BC, and Ontario are better than PEI and HDI. So that boosted up their score quite a bit. Very surprising again. I thought all the Atlantic provinces would do pretty bad in that category. But federal revenue to expenditure ratio, they're the worst. Uh, a bit more than twice as much money gets paid into uh, PEI than PEI pays into the federal government. So that puts them at a total score of 86, which puts them in the B tier, which again was pretty surprising to me. So second to last province now, Quebec. Unemployment is again tied with Manitoba for being the lowest in the country, but their COVID death rate is the highest in the country. GDP per capita is sixth in the country. Population growth is also sixth. Violent crime rate, they're the third safest, safest province in the country in terms of violent crime. Crop production, they're the fourth highest. Land area, they're the largest province in Canada. Uh, 1.5 million square kilometers, that's very impressive. Electricity generation, they're first. That's quite a, way, quite a ways ahead of Ontario in this one, actually. Uh, population, they're second. Quite a ways behind Ontario, but also quite a ways ahead of BC. Road network, they're fourth. HDI, they're sixth. And federal revenue to expenditure ratio they're sixth so in terms of hdi they're the worst other than manitoba and the atlantic provinces federal revenue though a lot of people in the west especially uh, like to criticize quebec for taking more than they give in terms of uh, the federal government which definitely is true but they're a bit better than a lot of the atlantic provinces so that puts quebec at a score of 82 overall which puts them in the c tier that's going to piss some people off isn't it and finally, we have Saskatchewan. They rank 7th in unemployment, 5th in COVID deaths, right in the middle. GDP per capita, they're second after Alberta. I think that has to do with their oil and gas industry. Population growth, they're also second, which is pretty good considering for a while they were losing population and they went above a million and then below a million and then above a million again. Violent crime rate, they're first. They have a very high violent crime rate, by Canadian standards at least. Um, they're a bit higher than Manitoba, but the two of them are way higher than the next worst, which is Newfoundland. Crop production, they're second. Obviously, they're very well known for canola and wheat. Land area, they're fifth, but still huge. Electricity generation, they're seventh. By the way, some of the earlier rounds, I kind of screw earlier provinces. I messed up the order here. I'll put a correction in the like an overlay thing. Uh, population, Saskatchewan ranks six, just over a million, about 1.1 actually. And they have the longest road network, but as I said with Alberta, this is from 2009, the most recent data I could find, so Alberta may be ahead of Saskatchewan, I would assume. Um, and HDI, they're right in the middle at 5th. Federal revenue to expenditure ratio, they're at 4th. They receive just a little bit more than they, take, or than they give to the federal government, and that puts them at a score of 102, and that puts Saskatchewan in the A tier with BC and Ontario. And here are the final scores, Alberta's first, BC's second, then Ontario, Saskatchewan, PEI, Quebec, Manitoba, Newfoundland, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. If you disagree with some of the categories or think I should add something or change the weighting system or the scoring system, let me know in the comments. Here's the updated tier list. I kind of moved them around a bit, so now it's actually in order. I moved Quebec and I moved... I think I just moved Quebec actually. Anyway, so that's the tier list. Alberta is the only S tier. BC, Ontario, and Saskatchewan are A tier. And unfortunately, uh, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia didn't perform that well in a lot of these categories and they're in the D tier. Uh, and as I said earlier, the territories aren't in this because a lot of the data is too hard to find. Um, and I wanted to use this specific set of data. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is a lot different than anything I've ever done on my channel before. If you haven't watched any of my other videos, and this is the first time you're seeing one of my videos, most of my other content is uh, GeoGuessr, but there is some Sporkle and uh, some of those games where you name as many US cities as you can or European cities or Canadian cities. But I do expect or plan to make some videos like this occasionally in the future because I do enjoy them. Obviously, they're a lot more effort and time consuming than my GeoGuessr content though. So they'll have to be uh, a bit more rare, I would say. But yeah, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Bye.